Hello and welcome to this, your daily briefing. Um, we've got a few bits to get through today, so um, try, I think we're trying to get it all done in one go, can't we? Uh, Levy bleating, um, some really specious um, transfer rumour stuff. A star player in our midst, um, Harry Kane again. And to finish, um, some really, really, really nice quotes from Glenn Hoddle. And... I think they're really good because they echo stuff that I've said over the last few weeks. So, um, without further ado, um, Daniel, 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 Daniel. Um, we've we've had the the uh, the video from his nibs um, in the wall slayer, um, telling us, you know, this sort of uh, this sort of uh, call me Daniel routine with the the old what was the line? What's been interesting? I must have had about thirty different names from fans. Some of the individuals that have been mentioned that have apparently rejected us, we haven't even spoken to. This attitude, this 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 sort of sat on high mocking doesn't sit well with anybody. And this is one of the reasons that um, Tottenham's PR is, is just limps from one disaster to another and to another. The idea that anybody after... I think I think we're sixty plus days since we sacked the last guy, and there's now fewer days ahead of us before we play our first competitive game, and there's pre-season as well. And he's ch he's chuckling, he's chuckling at speculation being inaccurate. And as I've said before, one way to fill an information void is you do it yourself. Um, so the uh, clearly he wanted to, to, to ram home the message, um, didn't feel that everybody had, had fully got behind him, fully given them his support after his video. And um, they've, they've weaseled their words via, um, again, via the, the um, Evening Standard. Senior figures at the club are frustrated that their targets have been so quickly leaked to the public into the public domain and believe it has created an unfairly chaotic picture of the situation. Right, what would be a more accurate picture of the, the situation? What would you like us to say that would be nicer? What can we pull out of this train wreck to say that, you know, things aren't as bad as it may first appear. There's twisted metal and steam and flames and firemen and dead bodies. But you want us to pull something out of that scene that gives us hope and confidence in what you're doing, um, leading this business by the, but from the front. There isn't anything. There's nothing at all. And this is just another example of the worrying detachment that exists um, between the, the club and the supporters and it won't be fixed with getting a, a punter in on the board meetings it won't be fixed at all in fact if they get the wrong person and which is to say they don't get a sort of quite so what, what i would describe as one of these stuffed shirt characters um like a, uh, a member of the, the supporters trust somebody who relishes the the, the tin pot stardom of, of, of being, you know, the mystique of the biscuits and the tea urn. Somebody, if they get the wrong person, if they get a regular Joe, somebody who perhaps their heart is in the right place, but they're not cut out for the sort of, um, I think celebrity is the wrong word, but you know what I mean. I think the pressure would get to them and they'd step down because a lot is going to be expected of this individual that they're never, ever, ever going to deliver. Um, so just... You can deflate, diffuse the whole situation, Mr. Levy, by getting on with it. It's a really old traditional business tactic. You get up in the morning and you get on with it. You don't want, you know, bother yourself with wandering around um, asking people why they're pointing at you and smirking. Just get on with it. Go out there and get someone. But the problem is you're selling you know, the phrase poison chalice is overused, but you're, 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 you're offering people a busted flush, a duff product. This, this is something that nobody wants. And all of the flim flam that we've had about the wonderful stadium, the wonderful training facilities and the blah, 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 blah it's all fallen to pieces. 
and Mourinho not being able to work at Tottenham has put the fear of God up any straightforward, right-thinking manager. Less introspective waffle, more concentration upon solving the problem. And you see, the problem is we live in a di digital age, I say, sounding like I'm 90, where everything is bombarding us on our screens and our devices all the time. There is no letting people respectfully have time to get on with it. You know, people want results yesterday and they're not interested in your challenges and all this other uh, huff and puff you put out. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Right, so a um, bit of transfer stuff for you. Um, but I warn you, this is uh, poppycock. Is that a good good word? Polite word? Um, John Cross for the mirror. Reheated dog's dinner of a, of a, of a piece here. Um, there's no surprise that the mirror doesn't produce anything of any worth, um, football-wise. Um, same with the politics, same with everything else, and they're total waste of time. Daniel Levy vows to stand firm to hold off Man City and keep Harry Kane at Tottenham. One glance at the article, and there's no vow. Um, there's no quotes from Levy. There's no nothing. And, you know, it then says that City are preparing a £100 million bid but Daniel Levy's not planning to sell his superstar striker. I don't even understand who this is aimed at. I'm struggling to work out the demographic because I don't think that there are many people that thick <laughs> strolling the planet who are going to read that and say, here, Dave, do you see that in the mirror? I just don't think those people really exist anymore. Um, oh, here we go. Here's, here's a man who knows how to fill a void. Jack Pitbrook of The Athletic. Uh, 140 million quid up the stuck um, in debt, this lot. Um, it, and it's only a pound. Don't forget, it's only a pound. Um, the Athletic understands the words we've been waiting for. Some insight. Some, some subtle understanding of the inner workings. No. Not even close. The Athletic understands discussions have taken place between Manchester City and Tottenham. Can't see it happening. Can't see it happening at all. I think there could have been discussions between um, Patrick Kane and Charlie Kane and Manchester City. Absolutely. But if that's the case, then you need to say representatives. You need to say agents. Um, and then he cobbles together a list of uh, Manchester City players that um, could be used in a part exchange deal. And... For those of us, again, over the age of 10, for those of us with a triple digit IQ, how often do they happen? The last one I can think of was Berbatov, Fraser Campbell. And that was like just crazy, unusual event. So, yeah, we could be getting some money in a carrier bag and Gabriel Jesus, Bernardo Silva, Raheem Sterling, uh, Americ Laporte and Riyad Mahrez. Um, just pitiful, really. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, and a separate piece from JPB. Meanwhile at Spurs, Daniel Levy wants to get the head coach search back on track. That's a bit mean, Jack. You're suggesting it's gone off track, that it may have been derailed. It could be a train wreck. Didn't you watch the video? Didn't you read the quotes in the Evening Standard? Daniel Levy wants a coach that plays the right way and re will re-examine the original shortlist of Ten Hag, Potter, etc. in the next few days. Well, that's a relief. I thought we were going absolutely nowhere, but that's not the case. A um, couple of quickies on the Euros for you. Um, I'll tell you one to keep your eye out for, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out some clips if I can find ones that are, you know, kind of worth watching. But Pierre Hoybier has been a standout player in this tournament. Um, Denmark qualified, um, no small measure, down to the 25-year-old. He's he's having a really good tournament. And what I did look at this morning, um, I used a thing called Y-Scout. I've mentioned it before. It's used by uh, agents and clubs and stuff like that. And it's a pretty good tool. It's it's in the same category of stuff as like Opta and all that sort of thing. Um, and significant number of key passes, shots and shot assists and his passing has been absolutely excellent. 
um, a fair amount of smart passes, as they're called, and what, uh, what you and I would see as, 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 as wicked little through balls. But um, he's having a really good tournament, um, which is great to see, because he did go a little bit off the boil when Mourinho um, left. But that's probably understandable. And of course, England play the Czech Republic this evening, which means if Harry Kane scores, um, he's the greatest living Englishman ever. And if he doesn't, he's distracted by transfer rumours or he's feeling a bit washed up. Um, so, yeah, Hoddle. I promised you some Hoddle stuff. And here it is. Um, it's an interview with a betting company. So I'm not going to name them. <laughs> um but the quotes, the quotes are, are really sound. Now, I'm not pushing that we should get Hoddle back in. I don't think he's, um, a, a, I think he's still a little bit analogue for a digital um, game um, these days. But he goes through the whole business of the managerial thing and basically just puts it on Levy. And what's more important than, than, than the, the pointing and the blaming and the, the point scoring is that Hoddle understands what you and I understand which is to say that this business of, you know, uh, clutching your rosary beads and saying, we need to play the Tottenham way, that isn't going to do it. And he even uses a line that I used a few weeks ago on the blog, boyhotspur.com, even if you had Shankly, Ferguson and Bill Nicholson all together in one, that team's going to need changing over the next few season, seasons. And that's why Kane's saying he wants to move. Got it in one. That squad cannot be fixed. That squad cannot be readjusted, redirected. You need to remove several key components of that squad. And I don't mean key like as in Sonny and Kane. I mean as in like you know who. Um, mentions Graham Potter and suggests that an English manager might be the way forward. I think getting in a foreign manager who doesn't know the league um, would be... What what's the next stage up from a disaster? But it would it, it wouldn't it wouldn't aid us at all, and I think there could be problems. And Hoddle goes on, um, da -dum, da -dum. whether or not, yeah, he he questions the spending, or the absence of, or the spending in the the right direction, and says they Spurs are at a crossroads, and a lot of money has to be spent on the squad. But the money's not there and managers could be reluctant to come for those reasons. I think, I think, like I said, busted flush. I think managers who are, are of a certain calibre look at Tottenham and think to themselves, uh, if, if Mourinho couldn't get through to them and if Poch ran out of juice with them, then what the hell am I going to do with them? And... This is the, the great thing as well. You know, it's always get your bias confirmation in early. Um, but this is precisely what I've said. Hoddle goes on. I feel that we've got to have some stability for a few seasons. It's got to be a mini rebuild to see if that, concess, that success can come round the corner. There are too many facets to, to the squad that are negative at the moment. And this is precisely what I've been saying, that there needs to be almost like a period of healing. At, at that club because right now it's just limping from one different thing to another so what it, you know without going down a complete rabbit hole but I'm just mindful of the thing like you know when your your aunt Dolly goes into hospital because she's she's fallen over and hurt her hurt her leg she then catches pneumonia and then she catches this and it's like we've never ever been able to get ahead of ourselves in respect of the squad it's just started to degenerate which you could argue was when Poch wasn't backed. I think that's fair. 550 days without any fresh meat being brought in. So it started, that's the equivalent of Aunt Dolly falling over. And, you know, she has to go into to the hospital. And then she picks up this and she picks up that. And it, and it just gets worse and worse. And we've now got to the point where, I'm not saying we're on life support, but Aunt Dolly's gone in and a problem was originally her knee and now she's being treated for half a dozen different things and the poor woman's in her 80s. Do you see what I mean? It's like this compiling of, of problems that we have. And to think that you can just bring in the Fonz or whoever, I would take a far more pragmatic approach and go for somebody like Rafa Benitez. But Levy doesn't want to do that 
because that looks like we're in the same category as clubs that have to appoint Sam Allardyce, that have to appoint whoever. And he doesn't he doesn't want to do that. He wants to he wants to look like he's really thought about it and he's got somebody really exciting in Italian, a director of football. And it's it's wallpapering over the cracks is a hackney phrase, hackneyed phrase. But um, that's essentially where we are. And Hoddle finishes. Daniel has to make the biggest decision he's ever had to make in 20 years of being in charge of Spurs. It's a crossroads for the club. And I pray he gets the right man that can turn things around. As I've said endlessly, it's academic. It's not the man, it's the mindset. That's, that's going to be the problem. And he was offered a fresh mindset from Mourinho. And he saw it as a challenge and he, he dismissed it. Bean bags, good night, sayonara. So we are, you know, it's like that, um, what was it, uh, unstoppable force, immovable object. That isn't a situation that's going to solve itself. Daniel Levy's caused all this, and now he's the man that's supposedly going to solve it. So we're talking about a major personality change, which... If the last video and the last statement to the Evening Standard are anything to go by, he's not doing that. He's doubling down. I'm right. I will get through this. And I um, regard anybody questioning what I'm up to um, as being completely impertinent. And that's what we're up against. The only solution I can see in the, the short to medium term is that Joe Lewis hits the eject seat button on our little friend and brings in a, a different CEO. Tavistock is swimming with CEOs, very ambitious CEOs as well. And I don't think Daniel Levy is perhaps the most popular in the, uh, the, the group. That's the only solution that I can see. Everything else is, is, is for the birds. It's just window dressing. So I wish I had cheery news for you, but um, who knows, you know. Good luck, keep it on them.